again, we got to get in. Uh, well, the, well, the Planning and Zoning Commission for Wednesday, well, the meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission for Wednesday, August 17, 2022, please come to order. This meeting, evening's meeting will be a hybrid planning and zoning meeting hosted in person at the Nathaniel B. Green Community Center, 32 Church Street, Guilford, Connecticut, Monongatuck Room, second floor, as well as virtually by Zoom. During this meeting, our procedures will be as follows. One, when you first enter the Zoom meeting, you will be in a virtual waiting room until the meeting host admits you. Two, please be aware that your camera, if you have one, and your microphone will be muted by the meeting host when you enter the meeting. You can turn on your camera at any time so you can be seen by others when and if you choose to. Uh, in order to return uh, to run an efficient and orderly meeting in this virtual environment, unless stated otherwise by the meeting chairman, during the meeting, the meeting host will keep everyone other than the commission members muted. You will still be able to hear everything said by the commission members, even if you are muted and or your camera is not on. There will be opportunity for public comment during public hearings, at which time public participants will be unmuted. Uh, three, the secretary will read the call of the meeting as published according to the government Lamont's or executive order. Four, during the public hearing, the applicant will be invited to present the application, explain to the commission and others present, present what is being requested. The meeting host will share all related documents on the screen as needed. In addition, all applications and supporting materials for each application on the agenda are available through the public meetings calendar page of the town website, um, www.com guilfordct.gov, also through a direct link on the planning and zoning page. Five, comments of town agencies will be read for um, each application. If there are any, there will be clarifying questions from the commissioners. Uh, six, there will then be an opportunity for clarifying questions from the audience. Please raise your hand through the Zoom platform and wait to be called on and unmuted. As this public hearing must be recorded, it is necessary for speakers to identify themselves each time they speak by stating their name and address. Seven, after all clarifying questions are exhausted, those who wish to speak in support of the application will be asked to come forward, state their name and address for the record and make a statement. Then those who wish to speak in opposition to the application will be asked to come forward and make a statement. Eight, the applicant will then have an opportunity to address any questions or concerns raised by the public or commissioners. Yeah. Nine, once the public hearing is closed, the applicant is free to leave or remain for the balance of the public hearings and the regular meeting during which the commission will try to reach a decision on each application. Each applicant will be notified in writing as the decision of this commission and has a right to appeal to Superior Court if desired. 10, decisions of, decisions of this meeting are available the day after the meeting by calling the Planning and Zoning Department at 203-453-80939 or by emailing planning.zoning at ci.guilford.ct.us after 9 a.m. 11, all applications taken, all actions taken on applications tonight by the commission will be a right roll call. All commissioners, commissioners and staff will identify themselves for the record before speaking. Seated this evening are the following members who will please identify themselves. Commissioners, um, Kevin Clark. Here. Uh, Bill Freeman. Hello. Ted Sands. Here. Philip Johnson. Here. Uh, Frank D'Andrea. Here. I am Scott Edmonds. Uh, and our alternates tonight, uh, Jason Marchi. Here. Um, since we are missing a commissioner, then you will be seated. Um, staff present tonight are Jamie Stein, town planner. Oh. <laughs> uh, I don't think Steve's here. Uh, Lisa Piambino, planning and zoning administrative system. Uh, this meeting will be recorded via the Zoom platform and made available on the town website for viewing. Uh, the secretary would normally read the legal notes, however, there was not one for this evening's meeting. So we will go straight into our agenda. Uh, Make a motion to continue the application for Jake's Cherry Street LLC to September 7th. Second. Second. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Uh, the motion carries unanimous. Um, next item on our agenda is Keith B. Bishop, uh, 11355 Boston Post Road, map 52, lot 7, zone R5, zone boundary change from R5 to BV2, continued from July 20th, 2020. Back, cover up a few balls. Easy Jackson. Uh, Mr. Bishop, would you like I to present? Um, can we mute whoever that is? 
Hi there. Good evening, Commission members. Thank you for having us back again for our second public hearing on our zone change request at 1355 Boston Post Road for our parcel. Um, we've got some updates for you that we're um, going to be presenting um, and giving you further information to clarify some of the questions that came up before you the last time. And Scott, just to clarify the order and what you want the presentations is for us to go first to with those and then you'll have public comments uh, for and against and then follow up with questions back for us to answer after that. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, your presentation, um, questions from commissioners, questions from the public, and then um, folks in either opposition or uh, for, and then at the very end, you'll have an opportunity again to um, final comments. All righty. No, thank you very much. Uh, as you're aware, then we're a multi-generational family business, and I'm fifth generation, and my daughters, Sarah and Carrie, who are on the meeting as well, are the sixth generation. Uh, they are the active operators and moving ahead our business into the next century, uh, decades ahead, so to speak. And the uh, concepts and ideas as we continue our agricultural heritage and our vision and mission statement um, are going to be best expressed by the two of them this evening. So I'm going to turn over to uh, my daughter, Sarah and Carrie, for them to, uh, to speak to you directly and I'll be available for any questions or things they may turn around my way. So with that, off to Sarah. You're muted, Sarah, sorry. <laughs> Switch screens in order to unmute. You'd think I'd learn by now, but all right, here we go. Um, so I'm going to, I'm gonna actually read a letter that um, from my sister and I just, it'll be able to express kind of after the last public hearing, um, we understand that there were some concerns and things addressed. So hopefully this, um, what I'm gonna read is going to um, allow for questions and comments that we'll be able to answer. So let me switch back here. Um, so we're asking this obviously to on the record. So um, as you know, we're requesting the zone change from our residential R5 use to commercial use PV2. Um, we understand that this may be difficult, a difficult de decision to make without more context, as we heard in the last meeting. Um, we hope that any answers and questions that you're hearing tonight will ease your minds and understand that this is hopefully a logical request that does not set a precedence for other applications that you may receive in the future. In the 150 years plus that we've been in business and a part of this community, we have had to adapt over our business over the ever-changing economic environment. We've done so with thought and care, keeping our mission and vision in mind and staying true to our agricultural roots. Bishop's Orchards has evolved over the years, starting in 1871 as a dairy and ice farm to then growing apples in a small roadside stand and fast forward to now 2022, as we have over 300 acres of working farmland, a large farm market, pick your own CSA program, cider and winemaking operation, a creamery, and obviously most recently, a lively outdoor space with food and drink at our little red barn. We've been working with a consultant and civil engineer for the past six months in hopes to make a long time dream of the sixth generation into reality. As the business and economy have evolved over time, we've come to realize that farming has changed over the decades. Gone are the days where we can hold our breath for mother nature to grace us with the perfect amount of sun and precipitation to yield an abundance of produce that people will come and harvest themselves in large quantities to take home and can, jam, bake, freeze, et cetera, for their winter supply. Now we see ourselves paying higher labor wages and uh, to maintain and harvest and sell through our farm market, competing against big box chain stores, and not to mention overproducing in some areas. We are not a small farm, but we are not big enough to produce the amounts to make a wholesale, wholesaling a possibility. What we do see is a beautiful piece of farmland that we receive dozens of phone calls and emails a week, wondering if we do private events, weddings, corporate retreats, farm to table dinners, birthday parties, baby showers, the list goes on. We also realize that we are outgrowing our current space where our farm market and manufacturing facilities are. We are limited as to how much more we can add on to the building without sacrificing parking spaces, which we can't afford to do, and restrictions, of course, not limited to zoning setbacks of wetlands behind our building. We're looking to continue our research and development of a business plan for an event venue, beautifully located amongst the rolling hills of rows of apple trees that we will continue to harvest. 
a piece of property that is contiguous with our main, main business, easily accessible off of state highway and roads. And what we see is a need as one that will be beneficial to the town and community members. We foresee the ability to educate children and adults with farm to table cooking classes and dinners, hosting farm weddings and many other events that people seek space for. We see this as an opportunity and benefit to the town and community. We know we are known for driving people into our beautiful town seasonally with our current business offerings. And this new space would make Guilford a destination year round, bringing people in for a weekend trip, not only to visit bishops, but other local businesses, shops, restaurants, town museums, beaches, local hotels, and more. It's a win-win for our local economy. Our limitations on manufacturing of both sweet cider and our wine and hard cider has come to a head. We are fighting for space to keep up with the demand and we need a bigger facility to make this happen. We are currently renting freezers, for example, we're currently renting freezer storage space in Hamden, Connecticut because we don't have the space on site. We are currently invest, have invested thousands of dollars into a feasibility study and other research as to what opportunities this land could be suitable for. Spot zoning is not a feasible option. Due to the current zoning regulations, inland wetlands and other environmental challenges, it does not make sense to break any portion of the land off and only request a small portion to be rezoned. The cost to move forward with additional research and planning for the future without knowing if this land will even be allowed for the use we are pursuing is extremely- If that's one of your, yeah, there you go. Sorry. Uh, that we are pursuing is extremely cumbersome, cumbersome in an already vulnerable economy. As a sixth generation, we are committed to continuing to operate a successful business and be a mainstay in Guilford. We are committed to continuing farming and, per and preserving the land we own. In order to sustain our business, we must continue to develop new ideas and business ventures that will fit within our core mission and vision. In order for future generations to be part of the success that we have been fortunate enough to continue, continue on from our previous generations, we need the ability to grow and expand. It's our hope that the commission will approve this application so that we can continue to grow, thrive, and be a community staple and partner in this town. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, did you mention, was Carrie going to say something too, or are you speaking for the both of you? I, I'm, she's shaking her head to speak for the both of us. Okay. So. Um, great. Uh, and uh, commissioners, any questions? All right. Uh, we'll look for qu uh, questions from the public. Um, if you are have your camera on, then we can see if you wave your hand. Otherwise, if you are muted, please raise your hand to the public platform. Yes. All right. I see no questions from the public. Um, <clears throat> so, Scott, uh, Scott, I believe there's a question from Mr. Brad Eisner. Is this question time or comment time? Questions. Just questions. Please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't. Have, I don't have questions. And thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, all right. The typical. We'll see. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, I would ask for those to come forward to speak in favor of this application. Sure, uh, Don, pot me. Uh, hello everyone. Um, I do wanna uh, add uh, my voice. Uh, of, of sorry, support. just, sorry to interrupt, just one second and a reminder to everyone, please state your name and your address for- Oh, sorry, yeah, my sure. name is Donald O. Patterny and I live at 65 Marshall Avenue in Guilford. Thank you. Uh, and, I, and I just wanted to add my, my voice of support uh, here. My family uh, moved to uh, Guilford uh, when my son started kindergarten. And um, one of the things that we uh, have, have thoroughly enjoyed uh, season after season uh, is, is connecting as a family uh, at Bishop's Orchards and various uh, offerings that they have. And now uh, my son is about to enter his uh, second year uh, at university and uh, we, we continue to be able to enjoy our time together at Bishop's with their new offerings. Uh, he's uh, a, a regular attender at the Thursday um, 
uh, Trivia Nights, which is a wonderful uh, place where he actually goes with his friends uh, and, and we go with our friends and we compete against one another in, in the Trivia Night. And I think that Bishops has, has uh, continued to innovate and offer so many different opportunities for our community to connect and enjoy. Uh, and I also think that it's a, um, a really rare uh, opportunity to see a family business uh, moving into a sixth generation born and raised in Guilford who understands the culture of our town and is really committed to continuing to offer uh, 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 enhancements to what they're offering to our community. And, uh, and I feel like um, giving them the support to be able to uh, innovate in their business in a way that keeps it vibrant and alive for another generation or more uh, uh, would be a real asset to our town in so many ways. Uh, you know, employment opportunities for our youth, uh, I think is another uh, extraordinary opportunity uh, that, that uh, they offer. And, um, and, and our neighbors continue to, uh, to let me know, uh, uh, you know, how, how precious they find this uh, resource in our, our community. So I just want to add my voice of support. Thank you very much. Uh, I saw Brad Eisner, do you raise your hand? Yeah, um, my name is Brad Isnard. I live at 66 Still Meadow Drive in Guilford. Um, I am current farm manager at Bishops. I've been there 32 years. I've worked for three generations of Bishops. Um, started when Albert and Jean were um, running the farm at that time. Obviously, I've seen a lot of change. As Sarah mentioned, they started out as cows and cows and ice. They certainly don't do that anymore. Um, <clears throat> when I first got there, Barbara Bishop was upset that Keith brought dairy into the store. Um, that was a few years ago as well. Um, I've talked extensively with Sarah. Um, she has a great vision for where she sees the business going. Farming is always gonna be a part of that business. Um, there's no family that works harder. I mean, when I first came, it was just amazing to me how hard from Jean, Albert, Keith, uh, Jonathan, and now the girls, how hard they, and how much effort that they put into it. That particular piece of land um, is probably one of the least productive apple orchards that we have. It's a phenomenal place for that um, due to the rocks and the, the ledge that's there, yet it does have a, the upper end as a beautiful location. Um, it's so difficult. I mean, nobody is, pretty much everybody that's on this has followed traffic on Route 1. This would alleviate a lot of that traffic. Um, it would continue to provide jobs in town. I don't think there's a business in town that's provided more first opportunity for employment than Bishops has. Um, and again, as Sarah noted, you know, back when I started, people would buy 120, 150 pounds of apples and they'd make pies and sauce and pan and people don't do that anymore. The amount of fruit we started, when I started, we had 168 or 60 acres of apples. There's about 90 now. We should probably have less. We have to have an equilibrium because you can't, you cannot compete on a wholesale market with outside sources when you can get everything all year long. Um, I think this is a great venture. Um, I think it'll do very well. I think it'll provide town with significant revenue increase, provide more jobs in town. Um, I guess I could probably keep rambling on, but there's no need to. I, I really support this. Um, my son now works there. It's been there for several years. If I did not believe that they were gonna stay in farming, I would not be given this speech and I would not encourage him to stay there, but I have encouraged him to stay. He likes it, they're great employers and it's a, a great opportunity for him to grow. So I'm just gonna stop there, thank you. Um, uh, Richard Wallace. Oh, it feels good to be back. <laughs> hey Dick. Hey, Jay, Phil, how are you? Welcome everybody. <laughs> nice to see you all. I'm in favor of this application for almost, in most of all the reasons stated by multiple letters of support and the previous two commentators. 
the track record of the Bishop family, their commitment to the community, their integrity to do any project by the book and not cut corners. This project means a little bit of a new look to Route 1 West, both aesthetically and commercially to make the change to PV2 makes all the sense in the world to me and the contributions to the town. And we have to, rec as the previous person spoke, you have to recognize you have to, they would not have survived as a multi-general generational business had they not had the foresight to roll with the flow over the multi-decades they've been in business. Thank you. Thanks, yes. boss. Uh, looks like Bo, and then we'll have Brian. Uh, Bo, would you like to go? My name is <clears throat> William Hume, H-U-H-M. I live at 465 Clabbert Hill Road. And I wanted to add my voice of support uh, for, for, for this application. Uh, as others have already said, it's an outstanding business. Any town would be uh, absolutely delighted to have a new business like Bishops uh, come to their town. And, and uh, between the, the beauty of uh, the farm and, and uh, the conservation uh, environmental ethic that exists, the uh, community uh, community activities that the, the entire family engages in. Uh, it's it's truly uh, just a, a wonderful part of Guilford, and uh, I think it's it's appropriate for planning and zoning to take into account. Uh, the kind of company it is and the, uh, the track record that they have. Um, and uh, so I, I just really support the application. Won't go on and on. Um, thanks very much. Thank you. Um, we'll have Brian and then uh, Brendan, I see your hand is raised. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Brian McGlone, 622 Mulberry Point Road. Um, uh, some of you may have remembered I, I was the economic development coordinator for nine years, but that was uh, two years ago I retired, so I'm fully out of that. So my comments tonight are strictly from being a resident of the town for over 42 years. And, and certainly over that time, I've witnessed uh, bishops evolve and change, and you hear of how they had to grow, evolve, and change with their marketplace. And my opinion, and it's been endorsed by many others, that they've done it with great style and grace and with the intent of improving their business while benefiting Guilford with uh, additional products, services, and employment opportunities, just to name a few. Um, I, I did listen in on the first uh, sessions, and I heard there was some concern about this nearly 50-acre, 45-50-acre parcel being converted to PV2 and recognize there probably are some allowed uses in PV2 that um, some are less comfortable with. But I think, again, you have to look back at their track record. They already have parcels that are PV2. So if they wanted to be bring in some of the less desirable things, they, they could have done that, but it didn't fit with their character, their vision and where they were going. So, I mean, I'm, I'm putting faith in them that, um, expanding the PV2 to do the kinds of things that they've talked about and Sarah reiterated tonight. I think, you know, those all make sense. And of course, putting this in and getting this zone change puts them in a position to start detailing and defining what they really want to do. We all acknowledged at the last meeting, there's wetlands concerns and aquifer and the old dump site. So from a practical sense, a, a, a portion, and I don't know exactly if it's half, a third or whatever, but a portion of it isn't gonna be developed anyhow. Um, so I, you know, without continuing to reiterate or repeat what others have said, uh, I have faith in what they're going to do and it's been gonna be good for them and us as a town. And I support this uh, zone change. Thank you. Um. We'll go with Brendan, and then I see Glenn Weston Murphy. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, letting me be a part of tonight's um, event. My name is Brendan Bloom. I live at 937 Goose Lane here in Guilford. 
Um, I come out this uh, from a little bit more of the business side of things, having owned uh, a large events catering company um, and restaurant uh, over in Brantford, but originally our business started in Guilford, you know, some almost 40 years ago. Um, I was a previous owner of La Cuisine, which was a family business. Um, I've executed large events, you know, for as small as five people. Uh, Dee Jacob was one of our guests in the orchard, actually, on a beautiful evening we had a few years ago, um, up to events as big as 500 people. So um, although I'm not, you know, running a catering company at the moment, I still obviously keep my ears to the ground. I'm in contact with tons of different folks. And I just want to be clear about my open and very vocal support for this project. Um, and I'll just, you know, kind of touch on a very few high level reasons why. Um, experiential events are really where catering and event planning are moving towards um, in the future. And I think post pandemic, uh, we've really seen that come to the forefront of what guests are looking for. They don't want a four walled boxed in environment. They want something that is gonna allow themselves and their guests to interact in an open, comfortable, um, aesthetically beautiful space that evokes a sense of place and presence. And to what, quite honestly, having worked throughout the orchards and with Sarah and Carrie and Keith, um, there really isn't much of a better location almost in all of New England. And I have, you know, traveled all over New England and worked all over New England. So I say that, you know, from the, the most experience. Um, some of the events I've had an opportunity to, to do with the bishops have been extraordinary. Um, guests, you know, years later continue to rave about them. And it's the connection back to the land, to be honest with you, when you can not only harvest product from where people are sitting, you know, feet away from them, quarter mile away from them, and serve them that product in the environment that still evokes that sense of place, which in this case is the farm and the orchard, um, it's really an unbeatable combination. And I do want to make it very clear to the committee that people, when they say they're getting married, the first thing is, where are you going to get married? Oh, we're getting married in Guilford. Where in Guilford? Oh, at Bishop's. So, the name Guilford almost will come first as this potential space gets a life of its own and a reputation, but Guilford as a, a, that sense of place, the beautiful green, all the wonderful things that make this town as magnificent as it is, are pieces that can be shared with our guests. It can raise the economic profile of town even further. Um, and to have a destination like this that is so unbelievably unique and incredible and still directly related to the land and to the farm and to the town, I think is a no brainer. Um, agrotainment, as it's sort of being called, is one of the hottest, hottest pieces of event planning. Um, all the resources are saying such, conferences are saying such, and to be very honest with you, we, we, Bishops is just sitting on an unbelievable opportunity. And I think for it, with that reason, the town is, is as well. Um, and I, I just, it, it's just really just a no brainer in my opinion. And I, I wanna, you know, again, express my full support for the family and for this project in general. So thank you folks so much for giving me the opportunity to speak tonight. Thank you. Uh, we'll go with uh, Glenn Weston Murphy. And then uh, after that will be D Jacob. Uh, thank you, uh, Glenn Weston Murphy, 155 State Street in Guilford, downtown. Uh, so I reiterate all the things that people have said about family and activities there. My daughter brings her little ones to get pumpkins in the fall from Boston area. But I think the thing that, you know, sort of seals the deal in my mind is having built something in downtown Guilford and in the area, there are enough controls in place to prevent the things that people have been concerned about with this change to PV2. Uh, you've got the wetlands, you've got other cam boundaries, you have all sorts of other constraints on the property. So you're not gonna get something five generations, 20 generations from now that isn't going to be in character with the town, with the property, and God willing, it will be the 30th generation of bishops in the future 
but even if it wasn't, I don't see that as a problem given all of the other constraints and hoops one has to go through in order to design and build anything, especially the downtown area of Guilford. So with that, good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, T. Jacob. Oh, you hit it twice. Could you hit on mute again once more? Thank you. D. Jacob, 61 Cherry Street, Guilford. Uh, my present employment is president of the Shoreline Chamber of Commerce that serves the towns of Guilford, Branford, and North Branford. And prior to that, I was an owner of a food establishment that had a heavy catering operation. And so coming from those exposures, as well as being a consumer and an attender of events at Bishops, I'd like to, to share my thoughts. I think that the plans that the Bishop family has is the right thing to do to ensure that Guilford remains an agricultural town. I, as I travel the 95 four square miles of my job, I visit lots of farms, orchards, dairies, et cetera. And they all are either, you know, they're, they're terribly impacted this summer because of drought. They're always impacted by something. And they always are trying to figure out ways how they can reinvent in a way that keeps to the nutrition, to the traditions of agriculture, but are still creative enough to ensure that they'll be in the long term. You know, finding ways to convert their products to retail outlets because the wholesale market from the distributors is just not viable. Um, how to grow their business become a destination where the fruits of their efforts really can begin to be showcased and continue a second and third and um, sale other than the traditional sell it in a rack in a farm store. And there was a study in Deep by Deep in 2015 that talked about how valuable our agricultural industry was to the state of Connecticut, that it was responsible for 3.3 to 4.0 billion dollars of revenue, not, not even mentioning how they support a number of labor sources and tax base. However, what they noticed was traditional farming is declining and what is keeping agriculture and farming where it is, is the fact of moving into more specialty areas and creating value added output um, that increases revenue. I think one of the difficulties is that PV2 kind of is the only option. And, and when I think about it, it can you know, raise to minds of very difficult things. But when I think about what, what it takes in agriculture to find a second outlet for your product or even a third, we have to look at that it's a very natural part of the agricultural industry. My grandmother, my great grandmother, my daughter, all can for, they all put a production facility together and they can so that the, um, their farm, their little garden area provides food throughout the winter months to them. That's so natural to think about expansion of processing. And so as opposed to, you know, sometimes you think about well, processing is like big, heavy industrial manufacturing. This is so inherent, you know, canning was invented hundreds of years ago. You know, we really, really see that the expansion and the need for an expansion to continue to find another outlet for product raised at Bishops. Second, um, I think if we think about an event space and, and Brendan did put on a fabulous dinner up in, in the orchard, and it just is such a natural place. When we think about event space and we think about the history of our country, and I go back to what I was taught in school, maybe incorrectly about the first Thanksgiving. The first event space was that Thanksgiving in a field where the fruits of the harvest came together to be enjoyed by the community. And so that's a natural element besides being where things are going. I can tell you that as a catering person and trying to find event space for my clientele um, and two years ago and beyond, there aren't a lot. In the role that I am right now, we went through a number of places to try to put an event in in November because there just aren't the kinds of spaces that we want, let alone um, spaces that offer the opportunity both for education that just aren't a catering house. I, I'm so impressed with the idea of having a space, having experienced what it's like without having any kind of space around it, just out in the open. I know it will be fabulous. It will 
continue to drive tourism to our town. It will continue to ensure that Bishops is here for the long term. I also wanted to mention that Bishops requests to um, use their spaces different differently is really part of the historical model in, in the state of Connecticut. Um, we already can see the impact of Little Red Barn in terms of providing outlets for people of all ages to enjoy. Um, in 2005, there was a study in Connecticut um, under Yukon that noticed that the average farm is only using 11% of their acreage into active farming. The rest of it is in preparation to farm and to convert that farm output into revenue. So it's not like you want a farm, you can't have a farm without having other spaces in terms of it. I know that Bishops has made decisions over generations, like people that are of farming, families that have had to make the decisions that said the farm is the future. Those decisions to cut down an apple tree so that they can then go grow a new one, or to put a field and fallow to let it recover and, and have um, better nutrients for the future, or how you think about pollinating your field. All of those are decisions that have been made by the Bishop family that was for the good of the long term, for the establishment of a continued generations of farmers, and to ensure for the well being of the town of Guilford. I think that they have a proven track record of what they say is their bond. They probably have higher standards than we could ever regulate in terms of taking care of the property that's been the livelihood for so long. And I respectfully ask you to positively vote on their request. Thank you very much. Um, Richard Wallace, I see your hand is raised, but I wanna give everyone else first opportunity first. Uh, is there anyone else who hasn't got an opportunity to speak in favor? not see anyone go ahead Richard with your double deck I just want to do housekeeping I'm so used to be participating with you guys without identifying myself for the record Richard Wallace 386 North River Street in Guilford thank you <laughs> we know where you live <laughs> hey Scott yes sir can you at least once pop up a map for tonight for anybody who's curious sure. um especially since being a little bit more specific about where they may want the facility to go. So if we could see that on a map, that would be awesome. Yep. Apologize, everyone. I should have been ready for that. <clears throat> All right. So the parcel in question, uh, this is the area here that is uh, currently PV2. Um, this is a small parcel that is not related, although it is his own PV2 as well. Um, and then the parcel in question, or the remainder of the parcel in question that's residential, uh, R5 right now goes along Route 1, uh, along this boundary, and then um, around this one individual parcel that's not part of what we're discussing, and then down Long Hill Road, um, back to the corner. Um, so where would the area be? So there was, uh, someone had mentioned, I think Mr. Isnard had mentioned there was an area where the apple trees don't grow so well. And that might be an area that uh, an, an event facility might go. So where would that area be? So I'm um, sorry, it's Sarah. So I'm just, I can, Scott, if you zoom in a little bit, I'm happy to kind of identify. Sure. Um, where are we going? All right. So, well, um, okay. So stay there. And if you bring it, bring it down a little bit. Sure. A little bit more. <laughs> sorry. Okay. So. 
the the area that we've at, we're currently have worked with a consultant as well as a, sim, sim, a civil engineer and I'm he Mike May he's had another uh, P and Z meeting that he had to be on for a different uh, client somewhere else in another town so just if Jamie you can keep an eye out for him he was hoping to join um, but the, where we're looking specifically is for everybody it's kind of like to the northwest of that that dark space right now move your arrow to the right. Yep. So right past that, that's kind of the peak of the of the property. But to the left there, those apple trees right there, it's a very uh, that's down too far. That's inland wetlands. <laughs> so, <laughs> so right there, yes, roughly in that in that area, um, dead center where those apple trees are is where we're looking. It's kind of from the topography studies that we've done um, that seemed it's it actually was the most logical um, space for, and as again, with the aquifer and in the wetlands, not that we're doing anything and the aquifer really doesn't even kind of play a role, right? So we're not looking to put a crematorium or a laundry mat or anything. This is something that we're specifically looking to put up an event building and possibly and for manufacturing as well. Um, so, but that general space is where we'd be looking to do it. Okay. Right. So a reminder for everyone, the aquifer that was mentioned was a long, long haul road primarily. Um, and then, as you can imagine, the wetlands is about 100 feet in either direction of the brook, give or take. Um, and I'm happy to answer any other questions that there are on the map. That one parcel that's, we're, you know, we do own that's on the corner there of yep, that top property right there. Uh, it's not the one you're on, sorry, the one next to you. That one, yep, we own that piece of property. But that was not what we're looking to switch that's, to. Not part of this application. Correct. Just if there was any questions on it. Yeah, no, no, that 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 the entire piece we own is squat seven and seven A are both in the uh, zone change request. Oh, okay. my apologies. Sorry. But there is one single one acre lot that's uh, in the middle. There, the now, right. and um, I have spoken with that landowner and. Uh, he respects our right to do what we want with the property and um, said he wouldn't be uh, coming forward to make any objections. Okay. Um, I'm going to switch back just so that I can see everyone. Thanks for popping that up, Scott. Appreciate it. No problem. Um, anyone else that we haven't heard from that would want to speak? Yes, Philip, you have a question. Um, Jamie, have you explained um, to Keith and the family the um, revised process when the new zoning code comes through with respect to tying applications to changes? Uh, thanks, Phil. Uh, yeah, this is Jamie Stein, town planner. Uh, we have had brief discussions about it uh, conceptually as it exists now. Uh, there is a new kind of business district in our draft zoning regulations. It's called a planned development district. Uh, it's a commonly done thing in Madison, as well as in New Haven, where an applicant can bring forward a master plan uh, that has a uh, zoning change, but also coupled with a site plan. So um, this uh, was drafted, geez, one and a half, two years ago now, probably by Glenn Chalder, and it was uh, meant to help the commission and applicants uh, with this, uh, what currently now exists, which is a two-step process of uh, requesting the zone change and then coming forward with the same. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, all right. I'm not seeing any other um, folks on the line. We also uh, have received Jamie's the 19 letters in support. Is that the correct number that I'm seeing? Based uh, on yeah, the flying right. through? We received um, about, uh, there's 15 letters. Yeah, there were 15 letters. There were another four after 4 4 30 p.m. today. Right, oh. there's, yeah. So there's 15 that, that met the, and then there was another four that came through to email to me. Um, so we've had a lot of people speaking in support to this point, and um, I certainly want to 
make sure that it's well documented that there's a lot of support for this item. Um, I think uh, in, if you guys don't mind, it makes the most sense to me to just do what we did last time where we go through each one and say who it was and, and, and that they were in support. Um, otherwise, we're here for another hour reading letters. So uh, what do you think is the correct way to go, Sarah? <laughs> So, um, I mean, my hope was that they were read into the record. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to let my father, I, I understand um, the time constraints. I just want to make sure that all the commissioners have had time to review them and understand what um, the, each letter of support is saying um, and have any other further discussion before. So we, we I, all have been sent the 15. I'm more than happy to read the four that came. So uh, I'd be, I, I'd accept that if, if that's okay. I'm going to... And I'll go through the 15 just to, to demonstrate for the public who it was that wrote them. Um, okay. and, and is that, that work for you? Fair enough. So let's, let me share my screen and we'll go through the 15 first. <clears throat> um, so this was a letter from Tim Sperry at uh, 22 Broad Street. Um, and then we had a letter from uh, Peter Palumbo at, uh, let's see, he does not leave an address. Pete lives on, Pete lives on Lover's Lane. It's, yeah. it's in the letter, 120 Lover's Lane. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. 120 Lover's Lane, but you probably can also meet him in his business place. Um, the, just to clarify, Mr. Chairman, these are all sure. letters of support. Correct. All these are all letters of support. Um, this letter is from Robert Hartman at... Uh, well, it looks like that doesn't have an address. Um, He's on Plains Road or his business is at uh, the um, Milano's Plaza there where Planet Fitness is. Thank you, Mr. Bishop. Um, this is a letter from Larry Calfet. Um, Cap I said I butchered that. Um, at uh, 5 Mafra Drive. Uh, letter in support. Another letter of support from uh, Tim Pinchback, president of William Pinchback Incorporated, uh, 929 Boston Post Road. That was uh, Tom Pinchback. Sorry, Tom. Yep. Pinch. Uh, Which this Tom is also the other major agricultural business that's been in Guilford for a long time with the uh, rose growers and the greenhouses that are back off of Route 1 uh, opposite um, the old AMP plaza. Thank you. Um, this is a letter in support from Greg Goulet at 86 Pond View Circle. Um, we had, he came actually on and spoke, so, but this is a letter that was put in by Don Apotomy um, from 65 Marshall Avenue. That's right. Thank you very much. And, and my wife and son uh, both uh, are, uh, helped to, to write that letter as well. Appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, you also went into the website to also express your support. Appreciate that. Oh. Um, there's a letter in support from uh, Richard Fitzpatrick and his wife Elaine at uh, 80 Lower Road, Guilford. <clears throat> this is a letter of support from William Lee at 181 Falcon Road in Guilford. A 60 plus year resident. Um, this is a letter of support from Richard and Janet Sandella at 62 Tuttles Point Road in Guilford. Um, a letter again from the Fitzpatrick family. This is a letter from Julie Fitzpatrick in support. And this is a letter from Mary Jo Kessner and Russell Campaign at 131 Boston Street. Um, this is a letter from Jacqueline uh, Gaudioso um, at 16 Hickory Road in Guilford. Um, a letter in support, again, from the Oponomi family. Very supportive, appreciate that. <laughs> Um, and those were the 15. So then let me jump to sharing the other four. And um, 
I wonder if some of the commissioners can help me with this reading. I'll pop it up on the screen. Um, first one. Chair. Uh, Mr. Philip Johnson, would you mind reading this one for me? Uh, dear Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning and Zoning Commission, we write regarding Bishop's Orchard application for zone change request with the Planning and Zoning Commission. Unfortunately, we are unable to appear at the meeting this evening in person, so we respectfully request the Commission read our letter in support of the record. We urge the Commission to consider moving Bishop's Orchard's application forward tonight. As you are aware, Bishop's is a proud and long, Bishop's has a proud and long tradition of promoting agriculture in the town of Guilford for 151 years. They have grown as a farm, a market, a winery, a tourism attraction for those along the shoreline and state. It goes without saying that their family has a farm, their family farm has contributed to the economic development and well-being of the town of Guilford in the past and promises to continue to do so in the future. The Bishop family has always been conservationists and careful to conserve the environmental concerns in daily business decisions. If afforded this opportunity, the special permit for the 48 acres, um, 52, but whatever, uh, acres, of land would be beneficial to the entire town in terms of economic development as they expand their manufacturing operations and create an event facility. This expansion of services would bring new people into town and contribute to the town's vitality. Additionally, approval of this application as it would provide bishops, orchards, more flexibility to be environmentally conscientious by allowing them to be mindful of the aquifer, agricultural, and land preservation, renewable energy, and continue their tradition of conservation as they have created on the land. Approval of this application would not be a blanket statement of acceptance, but would move this portion, uh, so portion forward so that bishops can begin the planning process. As stewards of the land, they have vested interest in keeping the best interests of the community and its environment at heart. It is our understanding that the orchard would still need to go to the commission for several permitting processes along the way as they are looking to expand their facility and would work with the town to maintain the integrity of their intentions. Uh, as a municipality that continues to work to expand the growth of our vibrant agricultural and business community, we appreciate your favorable consideration of Bishop's Orchard's application. If we can be of further assistance, do not hesitate to reach out. Christine Cohn and Sean Scanlon. And Vince State Rep. And Vince Candelora. Sorry, and sorry, Vincent Candelora, State Representative. Sorry, I did not mean to slight. Vincent Candle, just thank you. Hey, and Frank, uh, Frank, if you'd be able to help me on the next one, yes, sir. Yep. This is to the town of Guilford Planning and Zoning, dated August 17th, from David DeMaio at 1353 Great Hill Road. Um, Bishop's Orchard and Farm Market request for zone change. Dear commission members, please accept and read into the meeting minutes this letter of support for the requested zone change put forth by the Bishop's Orchards and Farm Market. The six generations of the Bishop family who own and manage the historical icon and successful business are unmatched in the state of Connecticut. Their presence in our town has been nothing short of a quote, crown jewel, end quote, asset and something every town resident has benefited from. The Bishop family generations have all proven to be superior stewards of the most treasured resource, the land that they farm, nurture and care for every day. We as residents benefit by having safely grown and readily available wholesome food, excellent services, abundant resources, and enjoyable entertainment. As business age, there are, quote, ceilings, end quote, that are hit. And for a business to thrive and grow, those ceilings need to be pushed through with forward thinking and vision. The Bishop family is nearing another 
quote, ceiling, end quote, in their growth and will continue to solid leadership from generation number five and the vision of generation number six. This next ceiling will be pushed through. The benefit to the town will be outstanding as it has been proven in the past. The addition of the bakery, the winery, the creamery, in the event venue known as the quote, Little Red Barn, end quote, have all brought us joy when visiting the property. The Town of Guilford and the Planning and Zoning Commission have a unique and powerful opportunity to become a partner in the continued success and support of the Guilford's quote, crown jewel, end quote. Please keep in mind, through six generations, the Bishop's family members have always grounded their business decisions on their quote, core values, end quote of family, community, trust, and integrity. Please consider your vote in favor of this requested zone change, a vote for the future of Guilford, quote, an agricultural community, end quote, that must look beyond the narrow definition of the word, quote, agricultural, end quote, and embrace the diversity of this industry. Respectfully submitted, David DeMaio, 1353 Gray Hill Road, Guilford. Thank you very much. Um... And Kevin Clark, can you help me with this next one? <clears throat> to the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission, I am writing this letter in support of Bishop's Orchard's request for a zone change request to rezone 46 acres of the 54 acres of land they own, bordered by the south side of I-95, Long Hill Road and Boston Post Road, Route 1, to the PV2 zone, which is Post Road Village District 2. The Bishop family has always been incredibly committed and respectful of our community, and their actions have proven that over their 151 years of business in Guilford through the years, they've, they've, been, they've been the venue for large and small gatherings alike, for nonprofit organizations and community events and for private events, including for me and my family over the years. Not only have I heard no negative issues associated with their operations and or events, the Bishop family and their operational staff go out of their way to ensure that not just the organization or the entity or event has what they need, but are sure that is within the guidelines of the town approvals they have sought and are respectful of the surrounding neighbors and, and community. Allowing a zone change for this unique property allows the Bishop's Orchard family and business to grow in a smart manner and to continue to reflect the values and services, the needs of those not just in Guilford, but throughout the region. This zone change for a unique area of Guilford, which has very other little use, will continue to enhance our community through the family's sound judgment, utilization of professional consultant experience, and a planned strategy to help the operation expand and keep up with today's needs. The Bishop's family reputation and dedication to Guilford should be considered in this request. For all those reasons, I support this request for the zone change for Bishop's Orchards in front of you tonight. Uh, sincerely, Michael, Ailes 446 Old Whitfield Street. Thank you very much. <coughs> uh, and the last uh, item that came through um, was uh, um, this is from Liza Jansen Petra at 44 Old Quarry Road, Guilford, Connecticut. Uh, Executive Director of the Guilford and Branford Community Foundations. To my concern, I'm writing in support of Bishop Orchard's request for a zone change for their property slash orchard. Not only is Bishop's Orchard a thriving family-run business that employs hundreds of people, including a number of local high school students, pays six figures in taxes to the town, and attracts visitors to their farm market and by association the town. They're a leading example of giving back to the community. There's not a nonprofit organization in town that they have not supported in some way through scholarship, through rounding the quote unquote rounding up at the cash register, through donation of cider and donuts, through their volunteerism of local events on boards and through charitable organizations. As bishops grows, their impact on our local community grows as well. It is exciting to consider their proposal, particularly the idea of a new event space in an active farming community. Nonprofit organizations rely on events, uh, dinners, galas, auctions, et cetera, to meet the bottom line. Another venue would be the most welcome addition. While we have a few options between Guilford and Brantford, an additional location would greatly benefit the efforts of charitable organizations who need to raise funds every year to support their clients through events. And the fact that Guilford has such a rich history of agriculture 
The concept of a venue in a farm setting seems specifically exciting. Mm -hmm. Please shout out to me with any questions or further information. I look forward to seeing the proposal move forward. Most of the time, Eliza. Okay. Um, any other anyone else on the line that would like to speak in favor? Um, I now give the opportunity for anyone on the line to speak against this application. <clears throat> All right, seeing none. Um, uh, Sarah or Mr. Bishop, any, any last things that you'd like to say uh, related to this item? I would just ask back to, I know last, last I don't mean to drag this on, but at the last hearing, um, there was a lot of questions and comments uh, from the commissioners themselves. I think it's been very quiet tonight. So I'd like to get an understanding of if there's any more questions or comments that you, you have for us. Sure, Jason. Uh, hi, Sarah. Um, I'm, I'm wondering about the existing uh, trees there that are that produce the apples. Uh, I'm curious as how long an apple tree can produce apples, and do you consider you want to keep most of those trees in place and producing? Is that part of the plan, or? So we we do. That is part of the plan. So is to keep producing on that property. Um, excuse me, Mr. Chair. I just want to note that Mr. Michael Hunt has joined. Has joined you in there in person? No, <laughs> virtually. Oh. I'm all alone here. <laughs> okay. Uh, while he's while he's loading on, uh, Philip Johnson. So, Sarah, uh, as I hope Jamie has explained, um, with the new zoning code, there's an opportunity to bring forward an application with a joint proposal for development and uh, a zoning code change. Um, have you guys considered just waiting on the zoning code change as opposed to going for it now? Our biggest concern right now, and, and I did talk briefly to Jamie this morning and she did mention it. Um, I think the, 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 and I'm not sure if you're referring to the, just the rewrite of the regulations on the agricultural side, if, if, or you act. At, no, there's actually, there's actually within the, the code zoning itself. code change, you know, people can bring forth an application with a specific proposal for what they want to do with the parcel of land and a zoning code change that would allow that at the same time. So right now we're kind of restricted that if we grant a zoning code change, you're not tied to whatever it is um, you might do. Um, so that's kind of, that's, it's a great improvement in terms of process. Um, and hopefully it will not be too long in terms of how long it will take us to get that done. No, I, I completely understand where you're coming from. I think from, from our standpoint, um, and obviously in hearing the support of, you know, people backing in, you know, the number of people in town, um, there's a lot of work that goes into what more has to be done before we'd be able to come to the P and to the commission again with a site plan, as well as the, the zoning change request. So we are looking to do it get the zoning change first so that we know what money and the dollars that we're investing into the consultations and working on a site plan and architects and lawyers, everything that we're going to need in the future um, to not prolong the process. And I'll just chime in there, Phil, thanks for the question. Um, yeah, so aware of it and as you're aware of it, that that's you know, in proposal stages and the draft timeline indicates uh, March of next year that the whole package may be voted on and it's all uh, proposed. Um, it's got to go through more uh, iterations and public comment process. So can't hang our hats on anything that, you know, is um, vaporware, so to speak, at the moment. So that's why we're putting this forward here at the moment. So we can, in a timely fashion, continue to you know, develop ideas and plans to um, to do with the things that we've just expressed to you in more, much more you know, conceptual detail than we did at the first meeting. So. Um, Time isn't on our side, so to speak, for for doing that. Um, you know, the apple tree length of uh, service for an apple tree can end be anywhere from uh, ten years to to fifty years, depending upon the type of tree, the rootstock it's grown on, um, the soil, and where it is. Um, so we're 
every year we're always constantly replanting um, some number of varieties and apple trees. And with a building going in somewhere on this site, there will be apple trees that will be displaced, but some of those would not be um, you know, replaced or growing again in a, in a cycle for other years. And as Brad indicated earlier, um, we have other land that we're rotating stuff uh, into and other crops that we're rotating around to um, at other locations to then grow the right varieties for the future of uh, the different mix between peaches, apples, pears, raspberries, blueberries, strawberries um, that we have and the limitations of the soil types in the different locations on the farm. So all those are considerations as well as, you know, water supply, um, that area for mostly driving by the Long Hill Road opposite the fireman's field, that's a, a steep rock out cropping, you know, there. So we've got apple trees that they planted um, many years ago that really don't deserve uh, the energy to be planted back there again, but yet those trees will probably remain um, as part of the, the vistage that goes on that site itself. Thank you, sorry. Nope, oh, thanks for pointing that out, Phil. Hey, uh, if that's all, um, I'd entertain a motion to close the public hearing on the side. Scott, can I comment, Scott? Yeah, sure, Keith. Uh, Thanks. Um, a, a little other historical perspective. We added on our last major addition in 2005 to the building, and that was after deliberate uh, um, family planning and the next generation coming along and knowing that we had additional generation coming. And uh, one of the sites we looked at splitting the buildings up to make room for what we were doing at that point was this exact site to then put a farm cold storage production facility um, somewhere on this site that would have been more farm oriented at that point in time. Um, but we decided against it. Um, time now, obviously we explained that, uh, you know, we're outgrowing what we're doing. So, you know, we are looking at that now. And then um, uh, economic development is not weighed in on here. I did contact them um, prior to the first hearing. Um, they've been silent um, and I can't speak for them, but Brian McLeod did speak up as a past EDC um, person and working with a commission on that end of it. And there's a strong economic development components of, um, you know, supporting our business operation to utilize what we have to grow that way. And then finally, um, I really appreciate the outpour of community support that has come forward in letters and people speaking up um, tonight and at the previous hearing. Uh, and you know, in that regard, um, I just am my attending um, numerous but not super high number like you folks, uh, the public hearings that you hold, it is very rare to turn around and have this number of people come out to support um, any application. And so I just want to have you make sure you take that into consideration as uh, the next steps going forward. So thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you. Uh, yeah. my, uh, yeah, Sorry, the only other thing is I know there was mentioned that I don't see him in the room that Mike was on. Did he not come in? Yeah, uh, it's Jamie. He's popped in and out. I know that he was going to try to join from his car in the parking lot of the other meeting, but I, I don't think he was able to stay on. So, I mean, since there isn't exactly a uh, proposed building or anything, then I, I don't feel like we have questions for him specifically. I don't, it doesn't seem like other commissioners would feel that way either. No, understandable. Thank you. Um, all right, I heard a motion from Mr. Sands and second, second from Mr. Johnson. Thank you. Uh, we'll do a roll call vote. Kevin Clark? Yes. Bill Freeman? Yes. Ted Sands? Yes. <clears throat> Philip Johnson? Yes. Frank D'Andrea? Yes. Jason Marchi? Yes. And I'll vote yes. Thank you very much for everyone in the public that has been involved in this. And uh, we will deliberate today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Back up my. All right. Uh, next item is deliberation of public hearing items. Uh, this is Keith Bishop, 1355 Bus Road, Map 52, Lot 7, Zone R5, Zone Boundary Change from R5 to PV2. Um, before we jump into a motion, I wanted to, I think we should go through. Go around the room and um, 
kind of take the temperature of where everyone's feeling or thinking. Um, anybody want to go first? I'll go first. Um, sure, Bill. It's, it's Bill Freeman. I, I know that we've had this come up before in other um, requests for zone changes. And I think uh, sort of echoing what Phil has uh, reiterated is that you kind of open up, although I, I'm sure that in this case, there's, there's no thoughts of doing something different than what their intention is, but I think it does set a precedent that we've, we've not allowed other people to do the same thing when they had a singular plan that they placed in front of us because we were allowing a zone change that created sort of an open zone, if you will. And I think given that we have something coming up very soon that would allow for them to bring a very specific idea forward with a specific zone change uh, associated with it, I would prefer uh, personally that we wait until we get uh, to that point and then the bishops can bring forward their drawings and their plans and the location and all the things that are associated, associated with it, you know, traffic, things like that, and we can look at it on a singular basis. So that's, that's generally where I'm coming from. Thanks. Uh, Ted, I saw you raise your hand. Right. Um, I think that while I understand what Bill has said and, uh, and, and Phil's comments, I, I think that given the nature of the property and the constraints that are involved with this property, uh, and the the whole process of being ready to make the application uh, of a specific type, um, I, I can understand why the family wants to do this in two steps. And um, Personally, I, I, I think we should go ahead and we should uh, vote on this. And, and I have a favorable view. Thank you. Um, Kevin? Um, my, my question coming in tonight was basically to address what Bill addressed um, about why not wait until March since we're mm -hmm. kind of doing all this. I think everybody pretty much in, in agreement that this is a great idea. Um, the Bishop's family in turn uh, answered that question again tonight why they wanted to move now and not wait. Um, I think they know what's coming in March and they know what's best for their business. And if they think to move now is the best route of action, then I got to think they trust their judgment on that. Um, so, I mean, I think the project sounds great. Mr. Philip Johnson. I think the project sounds great too, but it's not tied to the zone change. You know, I, mean, I mean, trust is a great thing and, and I trust them, but we've had so many applications over the last seven to eight years requesting zone changes. And, and these are fractional zone changes in comparison to this one. Um, I, I have concerns that if we were to approve this, that it really, it really reeks of favoritism for the Bishop family. And I, I, I honestly think they would do great stuff, but I think asking them to wait till March um, for the, to tie a development plan to a zone change is not a huge ask. And for us to grant a 52 plus acre zone change to PV2, um, when we've said no to similar requests on much, much smaller lots, even, if, even ones that are split, in my mind is problematic. It's, you know, you know I, I know the bishops are great stewards of the land. I know they've bought back parcels, but I don't believe that we should be doing um, exceptional favors for individuals I think we should be treating applications in an equal manner. And that's, so I, I would not be in favor of, of this at this time. If, if in fact it comes before us again next March with a proposal for a development, you know, for a portion of the property, 
I'd be all for it. But uh, I want to see the actual plans, not just the here's our idea. Thank you. Uh, Frank. All right. So <clears throat> I kind of was on the fence today. I learned a lot more. And from some of the letters, I learned a lot more on on kind of what a conceptual idea is, because I had no idea. I learned about um, agrotainment. Um, I, I learned that um, we had some caterers talk. So it led me to believe, like I said, that they're looking at some type of catering facility. But once again, it was all speculation. Um, it sounds great. I, I'm leaning towards what, um, what Mr. Johnson just spoke about, uh, because the, conceptually it sounds great, but it is a large piece for such a drastic change from an R5 to the PV2. Um, once again, I learned a lot over the last few weeks reading some of the letters that came in. Um, so yeah, like I said, it sounds excellent. It's, um, it's, it's tough. And yes, there is a ton of support. I think that if we let this go again, you can have another 500 people come out and support. They're loved by the community. I love them. My kids love them. We're, we're there a lot. Um, but once again, you know, we have to look at the 23,000 people that live in Guilford. So yeah, at this time, it's tough. Still not sure yet, though. Uh, Jason. Uh, well, I have to say I absolutely uh, love bishops. I shop there each week. Uh, they're definitely a local institution, greatly respected. Uh, and we're, we're seeing overwhelming public support for this uh, uh, zoning change. Um, they obviously provide high quality service, high quality products. Um, and, uh, you know, they're not a big corporation. They're a family run business in town, which I, I think uh, speaks a lot of, uh, on behalf of their quality. However, I, uh, you know, when I, when I look at the record of uh, similar, again, uh, zoning change applications that have been uh, denied, uh, which are of lesser scope than this, I, I do feel that, it, that it, at this time it would it would seem like favoritism towards uh, towards the bishop family. As much as I'd love to uh, to to see them continue to prosper and grow in Guilford, so uh, I don't want to stonewall them. But if they'll have another chance in March to readdress this again with a plan, I, I would be more comfortable with that. Thank you. Um, I would agree with a lot of things that everyone has said. I, um, as Frank has said, I'm staunchly on the fence on this. And I think it behooves me to play a little bit of devil's advocate in both directions. So one, one a couple points that I want to make towards you, Phil, um, in principle, I agree with what you're saying. That, and, and as you said, our record has shown that we are not making these types of changes I would mention as the devil's advocate that uh, most of the other applications that I've been a part of have had extensive neighbor um, opposition to those um, proposed any changes, whereas we have had one letter um, in this case. Um, the other item, the other related part of that to think about is the constraints of the site where it's literally bordered by PV2 on two sides, bordered by 95 and bordered by, I think it's three or four, maybe three or four residential um, homes, right? So this isn't a site that's smack dab in the middle of, of an urban residential space in the middle of downtown Guilford. Um, so I think those are some things to consider in terms, I, I don't think anyone's thinking this in terms of favoritism and I wanna put that kind of out the window. I think everyone can agree that we're as a, we're thinking about this in terms of what's best for the town. Um, this is, uh, it's without question that Bill Bishops has been a positive force for this town for, for ages and, and everyone hopes that they will continue to be so. So I don't think, I don't think that's what's, that's the referendum here. Um, so for me, I'm really trying to focus on that, trying to focus on, as you say, Phil, the, the precedent that's being set. And, and it does this set this, does this, is this application set apart somehow in your mind? Do you have a, do you have any thoughts to that, Phil? Um, I mean, I guess the only 
concern I have is, you know, it, it, if this parcel gets converted to the commercial value versus the residential value, um, I don't think anyone would argue that we're dramatically increasing the value of this parcel. Right. Um, so for, for us to make that call um, when we've denied smaller applications, I think, again, I just, I don't want to put us in the crosshairs of, you know, why do you do this on this application and not on some of the other smaller ones? And I, and I, I do agree with you. There, there's been 15 letters of support, but we have 24,000 residents in our right. town, give or take a few thousand. So, you know, 14 letters and I, I don't, again, I don't, I appreciate all their input. Um, it just, it, it gives me concern that we would weigh in saying 14 letters in 24,000 is a groundswell. Sure. Mr. Sands, yeah. Well, uh, look, I, I, I haven't been on the commission long enough to have seen all these ones that got turned down. I observed some of them, but I, I, I think that the point that was made uh, earlier has a lot of relevance. In many cases where things are turned down or where an application is controversial, it's because the neighbors or you know, some organization or some group of local people are opposed to the concept of what's going on here. And that's just not the case here. What we have, I mean, this is, this is zoned residential. I don't think this is a particularly prime residential uh, property. Uh, given that uh, you've got the wetlands on it and, you know, that it's bounded by commercial and, and Route 95, this, this isn't prime residential property. This is going to be used in a commercial way eventually. And what we have here is an applicant who wants to expand an existing business who's proven that they are you know reputable highly reputable and trustworthy people and they've got a difficult in my view they have a difficult task to cite and uh you know bring forth an application which we're going to eventually have to, to work on um, for a specific site, given the limitations of this particular property. And uh, so I, I, you know, I, I think that this, if we turn this down, this will definitely set a precedent. And I was on the economic, I was the vice chairman of the economic yeah, development they, they, commission. They can bring this forth with an application, with a proposal for what they actually want to do. Jamie, can, can you read off all the permissive, the permitted uses within the zone? Like, again, I, I, don't think, I don't think any of this is going to happen. And Scott, feel free to overrule me on this because I don't have any problem with it. But I mean, it's, we, we open the door. I mean, I, yes, I trust the bishops, but you know, how can we say we're going to do this for them and then not do it for other people as we've done in the past? So, as I said, it's not about who owns the, owns the land. Right? I agree. We need to try to make sure we don't discuss it that way. This is about this application. And that's what I'm trying to say is, well, what makes this application different from the other place? The other, the other, the other side of things and the reason why I'm on the fence about this is because for instance, again, the current owner is somebody obviously that is very trusted in the town. Um, but our, you know, we as a commission, we try to look forward as well. We try to think about 
well, if this land changes hands to something else or parcels get sold off, um, then, you know, as, as you say, there's a whole list of things that could be put on these um, parcels. Obviously, there's the aquifer and the other things that restrict those items, but just because you brought it up, Philip, I'll go ahead and put it on the screen for everyone to see. Hey, this is Bill again. I, I just, hey, Bill. I just want uh, the bishops to understand that we're, it's not there. We're for or against their pro what they're trying to do. It's that I think we need to be consistent as a board. Our charge is to be consistent, and I find it difficult to be consistent for others and then inconsistent in this particular situation, given especially that I think past people that had been denied was basically because we couldn't with any sure uh, knowledge know that, that, that what they wanted to do was the only thing that was ever gonna happen there. So I think that the new format that we're bringing forward in March is gonna allow people to bring a very specific thing forward that is for them and only for them to do on that land, given that change. And that's what I think we should try to focus on and wait for. And, and, and then I think going forward, we'll have no, uh, there'll be no nuances then, or differences between any of the applicants. Thank you. Thanks. Um, just cause Phil asked for it, I threw it up here. Um, the highlighted column J is everything, and I would, if I were, I would recommend you focus on everything that's P as in permitted, as opposed to special permit, because special permit, as we know, will come before us, uh, regardless. Permit um, is is an item that's just permitted by the zone. Um, so I'll just scroll through slowly. As a reminder, um, so Scott, I have one more thing I'd like to add, if you don't mind. Sure, go for it. I know it's spoken earlier about thinking this is a great idea and um, being in favor of it. And I actually came into tonight, actually was with no second thoughts about voting in approval of this. Um, but as I sit here and listen to some of my fellow commission members, I, I like Ted and New, so I'm still learning a lot of this stuff. And I'm not gonna sit here and tell you tonight that I have 100% grasp on everything that we're talking about. Um, but I did spend a long time on the Wetlands Commission. In fact, I'm still on it and work very, very hard at setting precedents and trying to be consistent mm -hmm. in enforcing those precedents. Okay. Um, so I, I, I completely understand the importance of that. And if members who have been doing this for quite a while are struggling with the fact that this maybe is not consistent with what they have been trying to do over the last several years. And this is probably not the best idea to pass right now, especially know what's coming in March, because you guys did all that with a big picture in mind, an agenda in mind of where you wanted to go with the regulations. And if you think that this kind of is a little premature and may kind of, I don't want to say sabotage is a strong word, but if it's just worth waiting for, then I I am willing to defer to the experienced members on this for sure. Well, it, it certainly does open the door for more conversations on at this level, right? So, um, voting voting for this, for instance, would certainly open the door for more applications similar, and then we have to make more and more minute decisions um, trying to decide why one application is different than the other. Mm -hmm. That's that seems like the, the argument that Bill and, and Philip have been raising. Um, and it's something that I typically agree to too, agree with too. I mean, I, I'm i real big on consistency as well. Mm -hmm. I vote as consistently as possible the whole time that I've been on this commission. Um, and and I think that also the, the reason why I think every it's been hard for us every time we've made a decision on an application like this and every time and the reason and because of that is why we've really made made sure that that Glenn added this PRD item into the upcoming zoning regulations so that we just wouldn't have to it just wouldn't be coming up again um, and it would come up as we'd have the tools that we need to be able to um, 
approve a specific project for a specific piece um, and not have to worry um, about long-term future ramifications. So um, any other thoughts? <clears throat> yes, Jason. Yeah, uh, yeah. On the what you just mentioned, Scott, I remember uh, when I served prior on planning and zoning before taking the uh, break uh, that uh, there was that concern about consistency and another application. It didn't have to do with zoning changes, but just uh, things that occurred in town. I don't want to mention specifically, mm -hmm. uh, but we, that was a big area of our discussion: is uh, if they were required to do certain things, and then we were voting that they didn't have to do those things. Um, it, that kind of smacked of, a, of, a, of, a, of an issue that was of concerning, and I know you were concerned about that, that why do we have the regulations, why do we have the rules, and if we're not going to be consistent with them for everybody. Correct. And we've been actively trying to identify those places and, and correct them um, since then, yes. Uh, all right, so sounds like from my read of the room, would someone like to read a motion uh, to deny? You, do you need a volunteer or what? Yes, please. <laughs> it's not something I can read. <laughs> yes, you put it up, Mr. Chairman, you have read your Robert's rules. Thank you. Yep. I, you could put it up on the screen. He had to put it you on, on the screen. Put, sure. Hold on. <laughs> I'm sitting in a very dark room right now. <laughs> you are in a dark room. I know you're in a dark room. Dark, you're like a floating head. Yeah, I'm so sorry. All right, it starts right here. Proposed motion, Bishop's boundary change, denial with- With out oh, oh, presence. Yeah. Thank you. Which Voted basically means they can bring this, this application before us again without significant change. Correct. Voted that the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission deny without prejudice a proposed zone boundary change from zone R5 to PV2 for 1355 Boston Post Road, map 52, lot seven, zone R5. This proposed boundary change is denied based on a finding that without site plan specificity, a zone change to PV2 zone will with all allowable uses could have potentially adverse impacts on env environmentally sensitive areas within the subject parcel. Furthermore, the proposed zone boundary change could expand the diversity, a diversity of commercial uses into a residential section of town and such an expansion of Route 1 commercial corridor is not prioritized in any current town plan. Second. Second from Mr. Philip Johnson, thank you. Um, all right, uh, another round of discussion. Any last things that folks would want to say? So I would just ask for, for clarification for anybody. So you guys are all comfortable with the fact that if this waits until March, they can pretty much get what they're asking for. Uh, I, don't I mean, think there's any guarantees on March? No, I, under, I right. understand. No, I understand that. I'm not that, but I'm just. Well, but there, there's no guarantee that it's going to be March. It could right. be but September. Right. Could oh, be I know December. that. But. but the plan is in place to allow applicants to bring an application forward for a zone change associated with a development plan. So the two are tied. I'm a hundred percent behind what their intention is. Yeah, 10%. I just think that it needs to be more finely uh, nuanced and focused at the time it's brought forth and 100% behind it. Okay. Any other discussion? I hear you guys. Okay. Um, all right, we'll roll call vote. Uh, so again, this is a motion of denial, so a vote of yes is a yes of denial. Um, Kevin Clark? Yes. Bill Freeman? Yes. Ted Sands. No. Uh, Philip Johnson. Yes. Uh, Frank D'Andrea. Yes. Jason Marchi. Yes. Uh, and I will vote yes. Uh, so that passes by a vote of uh, six to one. Uh, thank you. We'll move to the next item. We don't have any deliberations. 
Uh, new applications, John Varva, uh, Vavra, uh, three, Bendens Noel map eight, lot 243, zone R5, special permit modification for a 10 foot by 32 foot in ground swimming pool, receive and set public hearing for 9722. Also, uh, Misra Akhtar, uh, 72, Stepstone Hill Road, map 91, lot four, zone 30 C4, special permit for an after the fact 722 square foot accessory apartment, receive and set public hearing for 9722. And finally, Alexander Ness and Ashley O'Connor, 270 Rachel Road, map 109, lot 35-A1, zone R5, special permit for a 1,200-square-foot uh, detached accessory apartment. Receive and set public hearing for 921-22. Do I hear a motion? To move. Second. Second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? Uh, motion carries. <clears throat> the commission business, uh, we have a mandatory referral the, from the Board of Selectmen. Um, Jamie, do you want me to read through what's written here or do you want to just summarize? Uh, I think for the record, that would be good. Uh, you're sure. seeing this, I apologize for the third time now, um, just to give you some background and some detail. As the town's uh, council was negotiating the terms of the deed, for this uh, land dedication that was part of the resubdivision and affordable housing application on Hubbard Road. Uh, we, in consultation with the town engineer, found that the 10 foot wide strip that was requested to extend from the West River and get the public kind of beyond uh, the guardrail of the West River Bridge and out onto Hubbard Road. Uh, was actually of such a steep slope uh, that it would be more beneficial if we extended that uh, deeded strip of land to 20 feet wide. And that was that was uh, something that was agreed upon by uh, all parties. And so that's the distinction. The, the official re-subdivision final map uh, has a different uh, sort of uh, dedication of land uh, at that at that strip. So that's the so, specific. So do we have to accept uh, by roll call or something like that. Yeah, so I'll yes. read. I'll read it into the record. The board of selectmen at its, at its August first, first, twenty twenty two regular meeting, recommended to the planning and zoning commission under CGS eight twenty four to accept a certain piece of part of part <laughs> of land depicted as uh, quote open space to be conveyed to the town of Guilford and quote containing point four plus or minus acres on a map entitled quote resubdivision map land of Hubbard Road LLC Hubbard Road parcel B town of Guilford New Haven Connecticut County Connecticut uh, scale end quote scale one to 30 dated 10 6 21 uh, revised to 6 28 22 and prepared by the LRC group at 160 West Street site E a uh, sweet E Crown well, Connecticut. Said land is located on Assessor's Map 79, Lot 48, and is bordered by the West River and Hubbard Road and is on file at the Planning and Zoning Office at 50 Boston Street in Guilford. It so, will be your signature on the map, Scott. Remember that. <laughs> so do I hear a motion to approve this referral? The move. Second. Uh, I heard this. Aye. Aye. It's from Jason. All in favor? All in favor. Aye. Motion passes. Uh, second item on the other business is approval of the minutes. Was anyone able to review our minutes from last meeting? I, I move that we approve the minutes. They Except appear to be substantially correct in my opinion. I concur. Second. Thank you for the second. All in favor? All opposed? Uh, motion carries. Um, Jamie, do we have any ZEO report or anything else to discuss? Um, no, we don't. Uh, but I would just like to uh, let you all know that the uh, assistant town planner slash zoning enforcement officer position uh, that we have been searching for about the last month, the application period ends on Monday, uh, August 22nd. To date, I've received about 15 applications. Uh, I 
feel as though about five of them are, uh, are, are worthy of an interview. Uh, three of them I'm very excited about. So I'm yeah. happy to say that. Excellent. Great. Yeah. Um, well, and so I'll be, I'll be reaching out, uh, Scott. I, I would like your representation uh, sure. on the hiring committee. Uh, I'm also thinking about inviting uh, Steve Cox, the chair of the Running Board of Appeals. Uh, to sit in on that as well. So I'll, I'll keep you posted, but uh, in, in general, I'm, I'm pleased with the outcome. Terrific. Great. Hey, Jamie, if you're the only one in there, why don't they zoom in on you? <laughs> I, you can do that somehow, but I haven't. <laughs> There's no they. It's just me going over to the wall and hitting some buttons. Uh, I thought Peter was with you. <laughs> no, we no longer so. do that. No more videographer. Um, you know, I think I think it's worth uh, revisiting potentially uh, this hybrid model. Um, you know, I think the proof of concept here is that typically I've been here by myself. So well, I wanted to throw me. that out there. Thank you for mm -hmm. taking the time away from your family. Yes, thank you. So. <laughs> uh, all right, I entertain a motion to adjourn. I second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Good night. Good night.